The Pokemon series has shown us an incredible world where people can ride on flaming unicorns, jingling keys are dragon slayers, and mimes can have children. It's a joyous menagerie of elemental animals, and it really feels like an amazing universe where anything can be your magical friend and overpriced plushie. You could have a Pikachu who's also your dad. It's inspirational. It's hard not to get caught up in the imaginative wonder, which is probably why the franchise has been so hypnotically successful. I, for one, wasn't immune, to the point that, when I was in high school, I tried my hand at making some of my own Pokemon. Fake fan designs. Dozens and dozens of them. And, oh boy, was that a bad idea. Because they are embarrassing. And, well, wouldn't you know it? I found my old notebook drawings of them. So, because I wasn't bullied enough at the time, apparently, I think it's only fair that we give these terrible creatures their time in the spotlight. Who wants to join me on a trip down memory lane as we see my origin story and meet the cringy fake Pokemon I made in high school? Let's start with the thumbnail clickbait so that I can tank my average view duration with dignity. In Japan, the Pokemon Sawamula and Ebiwala were named in homage to Tadashi Sawamura, a Japanese kickboxing icon, and Hiroyuki Ebihara, a world champion boxer, respectively. Of course, you and I might know them a little better as Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. In English, their names refer to Hitmonster Lee and Hitmonster Chan and are homages not to athletes, but to martial art acting royalty, Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. And God only knows who Hitmontop was named after. Probably Carrot Top. With that in mind, imagine you're me. You're a weird child creating fake Pokemon, and you sought to add a new member to this family. Who in the history of action filmmaking could possibly stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan? Well, it's 2011, and you're terminally online, so there's only one answer. Chuck goddamn Norris. Listen, it was a simpler time. We barely knew what internet memes were. We thought that Rick Rowling and Admiral Akbar were the height of comedy, and we were only right about one of those. Harambe was still alive, Pickle Rick hadn't been born yet, and we didn't know what Riz was, let alone have any. So, as a society, for several years, we decided that 80s Hollywood action star Chuck Norris was the most powerful being in existence. The internet documented hundreds and hundreds of impossible feats that Chuck Norris had apparently accomplished, and we shared these legends around as if they were sacred gospel. For instance, Chuck Norris's tears could cure cancer. Too bad he never cries. And he beat the sun in a staring contest. This is what comedy was back then. So on the one hand, Chuck Norris was probably too powerful to turn into a Pokemon, like, if Chuck Norris used Splash, that would be a one-hit KO to whatever planet he's on. And if he fought a billion lions, that would just be his morning workout. But on the other hand, if there was any figure alive in 2011 who deserved to be immortalized as a Pokemon, it would have to be Chuck Norris. At least that's what I thought when I was 16. So that's what I did, and that's how this potato sack looking cowboy monstrosity was born. Hitmon Norris. Side note, some of these designs were going to be modded into a game before my friends and I realised that we didn't know how to do that. Which is why there's amateur pixel art as well as the original notebook art for some of them. Anyway, Hitmon Norris's signature move was going to be his roundhouse kick, which I never decided on stats for, but would definitely have been some overpowered garbage. Then there's the question of exactly what his relationship to the other Hitmons and their baby form Tyrogue would be. In the Pokemon games, a Tyrogue with higher attack than defense evolves into Hitmon Lee. One with higher defense than attack evolves into Hitmon Chan, and if the stats are tied, it becomes Hitmon Top. So every possibility is covered. And there's not really room for a fourth fighter. Which is why I think I planned for Hitmon Norris's to only evolve from Tyrogues, whose stats are simply perfect, with perfect IVs and max EVs, which sort of leans into the meme, but also sounds super eugenics-y. Plus it doesn't even make sense, because, as we all know, Chuck Norris was born as a fully grown adult, in a hospital that he'd already personally built. Looking back on Hitmon Norris, I think the design was a bit too simple. If I were to redesign him, I think I'd cover him in double denim, in honour of the man himself and his perfect genes. I also did a cursory Google search of Hitmon Norris to see if there was any parallel thinking, and if anyone else had the same idea, and it seems that yes. 
as though through sheer willpower, Hitmon Norris did already exist on the internet. In 2016, a DeviantArt user named Master Rainbow unleashed their own version of the most powerful Pokemon, only with two ends instead of one. According to the description, this Hitmon Norris had an ability that made its not very effective moves super effective, and it had no weaknesses, which is wonderfully overpowered cheese. I think this Hitmon Norris is a much more cohesive visual design compared to my own, and I love that his beard is just another fist, just like the real Chuck. So shoutouts to Master Rainbow. Anyway, that's enough of this meme history lesson. Next week's lecture will be about the humongous Big Chungus Among Us pipeline, and it will be in the test. But Hitmon Norris is only the tip of the cringeberg, and we have plenty more fake Pokemon to get to on this safari through a weird teenager's diary. Who's that Pokemon? Mello is just a little guy. A sweet little marshmallow who was normal type, but that's only because fairy type it didn't exist yet. I really stretched myself as an artist when I designed this limbless lump, but I guess Mellow isn't that cringe. There's nothing that embarrassing about a simple face on a blob. At least there wouldn't be until the Emoji movie came out. Who's that Pokemon? Mellow evolves into Marshall, who is basically the same thing, only stabbed through with a twig. Where Mellow is just a basic Kirby knockoff, Marshall is like American box art Kirby, and now has an angry face. It also gained the grass type. Typically, Pokemon don't evolve via impalement, but I think Marshall is still a harmless, innocent design. Until you give it a Firestone. Who's that Pokemon? Then Marshall evolves into Marsh Hell, and now life is pain and fire! Marsh Hell is in constant agony, and only wants to die. But sadly, it can't, because it's already dead. It's now a ghost fire type to really throw Charles Darwin a curveball. And remember, if you have one, it's because you gave it the Firestone. This is all your fault. Who's that Pokemon? Next up are Shivs and Shanks, two fighting dark types with criminal pasts and tally marks carved into their heads. Apparently, I thought it was appropriate to turn prison violence into Pokemon, and if that's not bad enough, according to my old note paper, at one point Shanks' name was going to be Drope Sop. Drope Sop, of course, being a play on Drop Soap, which is a reference to prison sexual assault, which was just a perfectly normal thing to joke about in 2011 for some reason. Somehow, I don't think Game Freak will be adding anything like these guys anytime soon. Again, the point of this video is a cringe confessional, but if I'm going to showcase these monsters, I might as well show them warts and all, and in their proper context. Who's that Pokemon? Speaking of warts and all, here are Squirre and Scorpion. I don't know what's up with Scorpion's squashed up face. It looks like it went to audition for Over the Hedge, but became roadkill on the way. Somehow the squirrel face is more messed up than the giant monster face on its tail. I think the concept of these guys was that squirrels have notable tails, and scorpions have notable tails, so why not combine them and make some normal poison types that are in direct defiance of both God and Arceus? I don't know why Skurra's name is just Squirrel without an L at the end. I spent weeks trying to work out if there was a reason for that, or a pun, or just what I was going for, and I can't figure out anything, so if you can solve this riddle, um, yeah, feel free to let me know. It just makes no sense to me, especially because both of these critters are just innately taking a massive L. Here are Sockery, Paposas, and Mesmeret. A sock puppet, a hand puppet, and a marionette that form a trio of psychic or psychic ghost type Pokemon. Never could decide on the typing. I think these three are decent designs that take a concept and build on it naturally. I like them. I think they hold up. I think Mesmeret is just plain old one of my favorite designs I've ever done, and Sockery is my only sock I have that doesn't fill me with disgust to think about. So what's wrong with them? What's cringy about them? So, Paposas has a split evolution, and if you don't evolve it into Ms. Moret, you get this dude. Voodoom is probably the edgiest thing I have ever drawn. You're basically looking at my teenage angst, concentrated and colorized. This was the era of goths and emos, and even I, the goofy fat gamer kid, wasn't immune. 
but just being the Pokemon equivalent of a MySpace post of sad song lyrics isn't enough because Voodoom is also cringy for a far worse reason. I genuinely feel kind of bad about this because... Oops, I did a plagiarism. I'll explain. So, the competitive Pokemon Hub Smogon, or Smogon, has a section on their website where they design their own fake Pokemon, with the goal being to theorycraft cool ways to shake up the Pokemon metagame. I distinctly remember browsing these fake designs and seeing a Voodoo doll. A Voodoo doll named Voodoom. So yeah, you see where this is going. I mean, we're already there. I saw the Smogon design, I thought it was a cool idea, and then I just took the idea and made it angsty and called it my own. In my defense, I would say that the two visual designs are distinct enough that at least my edgy OC can still be called my edgy OC, but it was definitely poor form to go about the creative process this way. At the very least, not changing the name from Voodoom to Voodood or something at a bare minimum is just impressively lazy. Still, I want to shout out Smogon's Creator Pokemon project. I'm not sure how active it is now, but it's a really cool way to combine a love of game mechanics with creative fandom. And while I was looking up Voodoom for this video, I found out that at some point, it was given an animated 3DS Pokemon style model, years after its original pixel art. I think it's super cool that Smogon apparently maintains its fake Pokemon with such a high quality standard. But yeah, luckily my edgy knockoff Voodoom turned out to just be a phase. Despite what I told my mum. Who's that Pokemon? Here's Higgs Bison. Higgs Bison's fun. The idea was that it's a normal psychic bison who is weightless but immensely powerful, and it simply hovers across great plains powered by psionic energy. It's also what happens when a teenager in 2012 hears on the news that something called the Large Hadron Collider has led to the discovery of something called the Higgs boson particle, which is also known as the God particle and could maybe destroy the world. But then that teenager doesn't do any research into the science behind it all and just imagines a Pokemon based on a pun. So I'm not entirely sure if my magical flying bison is scientifically possible, but I'm pretty sure it is. Higgs Bison's story doesn't end there, however. Years later, I was in a Dungeons and Dragons campaign with some friends from my university class and some of their friends. People I didn't even know existed when I was in high school, and more importantly, people who didn't know my shameful past of drawing cartoon animals. One of these players, my friend Nathan, was playing as a gnome ranger named Alvin Chipman, sorry for the docs. Alvin was a determined stoic archer and an obsessive hunter who was on a lifelong quest to hunt the ultimate quarry, the mysterious and all powerful. Higgs Bison. Independently of my weird high school Pokemon, the Higgs Bison had found its way back into my life, this time as the brainchild of my friend Nathan as his gnome's backstory. It was a complete coincidence, but I was more than happy to join Nathan and Alvin on the hunt for the Higgs Bison, until our druid friend Styx turned into a giant mushroom demon and snapped Alvin's neck, that is. Dungeons and Dragons is just kinda like that. What if the elegant, mysterious lady Pokemon also gave you cancer? I didn't drink in high school, I didn't do drugs, I almost never embezzled, and I certainly didn't smoke. Yet something compelled me to create this horrid creature. Cigarette is a wicked fire poison type, and is probably, by far, the least appropriate creature for the actual Pokemon brand's values that will appear on this list. Which is saying something considering that actual Pokemon includes kidnappers, orphans, wearing their mother's skulls, and licky licky. Still, part of me thinks that Cigarette is an effective design, albeit a cursed one. Making it a dignified creature instead of a disgusting one adds to the horror and almost gives it the allure of a siren song. And that kind of perverse temptation is how so many people start smoking. Luckily, because of all the smoke, Cigarette's siren song sounds raspier than a two-stroke motor, so hopefully not too many people fall for her trap. Unfortunately, Cigarette didn't come to this party alone. Cigarette was meant to have the grace of a dancer, and well, dancers have partners, which is how this chuckle fuck came to be. Cigaro is a smarmy bastard who thinks he's the hottest thing on the planet, kinda like cigar guys in real life. No offense to any of the cigar chomping Pokemon fans in my audience, of course. You guys are cool, if you exist. Admittedly, I did have enough restraint back in the day to not put too much thought into Cigaro, 
and most of his existence seems to have been sketches on my math homework. So that's why I don't know how to do interest. So I had to take some liberties for his redesign in this video. I really wanted to emphasize what an awful, ridiculous man he is, so I tried to give him the vibe of someone who says the n-word in private, and thinks that giving women the vote was a mistake. Overall, smoking is cringe and bad, kids. Don't do it. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm off to design a vape Pokemon. Who's that Pokemon? So here are three lizards, a family of dragons built off the fact that lizards can lose their tails and regrow them. I then turned that cycle into Pokemon evolution. The little one is a basic little lizard, the middle stage is missing its tail completely, and the final form is big and majestic with a powerful new tail. I think the concept holds up, the designs are fine, the colour palette is garish but mostly works, and pure dragon types are cool. As far as sketchbook fakemon go, they're perfectly cromulent. So what's the problem? Well, for some reason, these guys are named Starliz, Amputin, and Communist. Despite being based on tail regrowth, some weird part of my brain decided to name them after Joseph Stalin, Vladimir Putin, and I guess communism as a concept? At the time, Stalin and Putin were not exactly the kind of people who deserved Pokemon named in their honour, and somehow that already strange and awful decision has only aged worse. I don't know if you've seen the news lately, but Vladimir Putin? Kinda cringe. And he's not a communist, so the overall theming of these names doesn't even make sense to begin with. Maybe this is what people mean when they say to keep politics out of video games. Next up is Drabbit. Drabbit is a dark rabbit. I don't think I ever put much thought into Drabbit, and I'm guessing Drabbit is just something I haphazardly scribbled into existence, which kind of explains why Drabbit inexplicably has one of those dick-sucking cubit snouts. Here is a gazelle, who has the Jesus fish on its body, halo horns, and a Christian cross down its face. It is a normal type named Gazellot. Now let's talk about real world religious discourse in my comedy Pokemon YouTube video. Look, I feel bad about this one. I was definitely just an edgy teenage atheist when I made Gazellot, and I think it shows. Whatever your own beliefs are, disrespecting people's religions isn't cool. Calling them zealots is just mean-spirited. Be nice to other people, and maybe don't make a savannah beast into an incredibly vague religious statement. How would I feel if someone took a moose or something and covered it with some of the most important symbols and images for my lifestyle and values? I would feel confused. If I were to design this today, I'd change all the Christian specific imagery into non-specific symbols that are evocative of religion, but don't call out any group of people's genuine beliefs. Like how the churches in every JRPG ever criticise religious institutions as a concept, but not usually specific religions. Not only is that more respectful, but it's also more cohesive world building, because now we don't have this Christian missionary gazelle spreading Jesus' message in Arceus's world. I don't think Jesus existed in the Pokemon world, although I'm pretty sure they do still celebrate Christmas, so maybe there has to have been a Pokemon Jesus. If there's any Poke lore masters in the comments, uh, feel free to let me know if the Son of God canonically coexisted with Psyduck. Anyway, I'd also change Gazelot's name to the shorter and slightly less loaded Gazeal, because for some reason zeal and zealotry are similar concepts, but one is way more insulting. But yeah, again, sorry about the weird Christian Gazelle, I was a dumb kid. Let's respect one another, no matter what we believe, and I promise not to do anything like this again. Although, I do have a pretty cool idea for a Digimon, based on the Latter-day Saints. Hmm. Huh. Keeping up with the religious theme, Undung, Outdung, and Skaradiate are three bug types that chronicle a journey from having no poop to having some poop to becoming Ra, the sun god. During this process, they change from pure bug to bug ground to bug fire, although presumably the fire smells really, really bad. I redesigned Skaradiate quite a bit to play up with a holy leader aspect, but I think the core is still there. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet introduced their own dung beetles with Relor and Rabska, and I think it's a very funny comparison to compare the smooth, stylized ball of dung that Relor uses to the disgusting, detailed, lumpy manure ball that my out dung design uses. Kudos to the Pokemon Company for finding a way to turn a ball of poop into something that could easily be turned into child friendly merchandise. And now, dear viewer, we reach the apex. Something more cringe than Chuck Norris or cigarettes or amputee Vladimir Putin. Something that would be a worse addition to Pokemon than a thousand seizure-causing animations, or a Jinx with the blackest of blackface. 
something that I did that I truly have no excuse for and I hope is the most embarrassing thing that I will ever publicly post on the internet. Brace yourself, my friends, because... Who's that Pokemon? That isn't poopy, guys. Just some big old turds. Just two Pokemon that are feces. Meet Poople and Putrid, two poison ground types who, again, I must remind you, are oh, poops. <laughs> that emoji movie reference earlier? Yeah, that was foreshadowing. And remember Undung from a moment ago? Yeah, it evolves into Outdung after you have one of these guys join your party. Admittedly, the original designs were much more pure. They literally were just shit. Nothing more, nothing less. But for this redesign, this modern reimagining, I draped Putrid in toilet paper and gave him, or her, 50% chance, a big old adult diaper. Now there's a bit more personality, the evolution builds on the concept instead of just growing bigger, and the new elements give this visual design more contrast and points of interest. It's like how Superman's red underwear is a nice way to break up and punctuate that visual design. Except it's a poo wearing a diaper. At this point, I really must stress. I made these poop Pokemon a decade ago for comedy. And I gave this one a diaper today for comedy. This isn't a fetish thing, I swear. No matter how much it might look that way. There would be nothing wrong with it if it was, but, but it's not. I'm not a poop guy. I'm not a diaper guy. It's just jokes, okay? <laughs> okay. <sighs> oh dear. And those are the cringy fake Pokemon I made in high school. Truly a hall of shame. I hope you enjoyed this awful menagerie. And hey, I hope you learned something. I'm sorry that this video was more than a little self-indulgent, but I think there's great value in revisiting one's own creative journey. To remind yourself of how far you've come, and what inspired and amused you, and just how much of a hack you were. And then to try and find a way to monetize your childhood innocence. It's important to recycle your trash. These strange monsters aren't profound or meaningful. They're just fan art OCs from a franchise for children. They're all deeply, deeply stupid. But this process, the spark to make dumb stuff, this is pure human creativity, and an important checkpoint into how I became a mediocre, artistic adult. I'm proud of all of them, and I encourage all of you to rediscover and be proud of whatever weird artistic adventures you've gone on. And just maybe, being cringe is a little bit based. Wait, no, sorry, I misread that. A little bit debased. I've debased myself here today. But seriously, thanks for watching. For my regular viewers, if you're mostly here for Smash Bros content, I'm sorry that this isn't more of that. And yeah, if you liked this video for some ungodly reason, please let me know. And yeah, listen, zero promises, but if this accursed video does really well somehow, I have a lot more fake Pokemon designs where these guys came from. And well, we started with the worst of the worst. In theory, it's only uphill from here. So subscribe, and maybe we'll do this again with 10% less cringe. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'm not into diapers. Please don't let that become my online reputation. Oh, God. Okay. Okay.